Welcome to my untimely Christmas devlog for my VR flight sim made in Godot. I'm just going to start by flying around talking about what's new as it comes up. I think it's going to be the easiest way to make this video, so let's go. Oh, we're coming into this way too fast. We're going to overshoot it. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, we're, we're fine. We're, we're alive. We're alive. We're all good. No one died. I guess. First things first, it's been a very long time since my last video. It's been about five months, and for good reason. Um, there's been a lot of changes and just flat out new additions and improvements um, that we'll go over here. So the first thing here that you're probably going to notice is the terrain. Um, before I had a flat box with a weird texture on it. Um, and I called that the ground. Now I've got actual terrain, which I'll show off a little bit more later in the video. For now, for now I'm going to go over all of the visual changes of my F-16 model. I've greatly improved the entire body of the F-16 here. A lot of work went into getting it just the right shape because the F-16's got a lifting body. Also on the canopy here, I made it so that it hinges around the point that it should and it overlaps just right. The interface is the right shape and still got some weird edges and curvature to it, but I'll refine the model more and more as time passes. The HUD itself has been improved just a little bit. Um, on the back end, it's still exactly the same as the old one. Um, just changed the line thicknesses and added some of this extra information that's being shown as well. I will get around to completely revamping the HUD at some point, but right now it works well enough for my testing purposes, so I won't bother. I also improved the bubble head a little bit. Now it has a little bit of rotation rather than just moving in straight lines. It, it'll rotate and it makes it more convincing as a bobble head. At some point I do want to give him a little model so he's just a cute little pilot guy or something. So if I keep climbing here to a higher altitude, you're going to notice that you can see a lot of terrain. This isn't a trivial amount of terrain. I believe the view distance of the terrain is 400 kilometers or more. So it's, it's a very long view distance, which you wouldn't be able to achieve this long of a view distance without doing some extra magic with viewports. Both the terrain and the water use the same um, terrain plugin that I've developed for this. Uh, the terrain plugin itself is, so it's a quad tree hierarchy, so there's top level chunks that are really low detail that get subdivided into four chunks each, which then are subdivided smaller and smaller and smaller till you get these precise high detail chunks. Um, and the mesh generation for this is accelerated by the GPU, so it's, it's pretty fast. I don't do any distance calculation or anything else on the GPU, it's just the mesh generation. And so far I found that only doing the mesh generation on the GPU is much more than enough to provide extremely high detail and long render distances in terrain. So here it is in the editor. Um, you can start to see a little bit of it loading in here. It's not too noticeable and it loads pretty fast, so it's pretty good. If I go into wireframe mode, you can see the actual resolution of each chunk better. And as I start to go further away from the player, you'll start to see the resolution decrease. So here's one of the borders between a higher detail and lower detail chunk. If we get all the way out here, it gets very apparent. So it's a good thing these are really far away. So this level of detail actually follows whichever camera is active in your scene. So for me, it's currently the player. I do plan on making it so that the uh, terrain will follow the viewports camera in the editor, but the functionality was just barely added to Godot here in 4.2, I believe. So it's in the future still. Back here in the game, another thing I can show you is the vapor cones that show up on the wings. I might be going a little bit fast to see them. You can still vaguely see them. Importantly, these are here for the player to feel like they're going fast and that they're maneuvering very hard. As you can see there, we actually had the larger vapor cone from going transonic speeds. But the idea is that when you pull hard, you get the vapor cones, and so it's a little bit of feedback without having to look at what your actual Gs you're pulling are. 
I'll actually show you the uh, larger vapor cone again. Um, I've got to slow down here a little bit. Um, it'll only show up in transonic speed, so by the time you're at Mach 1, you won't have the vapor cone. Okay, there, there it is. Um, so I believe it's like Mach 0.92 to Mach 0.97 or something about there. I've also completely redesigned the city. I wanted to make the city bigger and have a couple more buildings to fly between. So to be a little more specific on how I'm doing the long distance rendering, I've actually got two viewports. Um, one that has a camera that renders closer distances, the other camera renders long distances. There is a little bit of an artifact of doing it this way. You can see a little bit of a line on the separation of the two layers of the viewport. Um, and this is actually a problem with transparent materials and how they're rendered. It's something that I'll have to keep in mind when I'm making shaders and evolving the graphics of this project. Part of the reason why it works so easily and with such little code is because each viewport has this uh, transparent background property. There's a little bit of code on this other camera. All that it does is it just follows the main player's camera. And then everything rendered by that camera is just displayed behind the main viewport and so it ends up working seamlessly. So you don't actually have to do anything special for input handling. There is one thing you might need to do. Um, there's the handle input locally, which I had to disable on both of my viewports to get around a couple of propagation issues. So if you're implementing this yourself, that might be something to check if you're having issues. Now onto the actual gameplay changes, uh, rather than just the visual changes. Um, I've improved the um, keyboard and mouse controls and just kind of the compatibility just a little bit. So I believe everything is interoperable now. There shouldn't really be any gameplay differences whether you're playing in VR or keyboard and mouse now. So I have added audio effects for the engines, tire squeals, and bombs. So far that's all I've got. I will overlay those three sounds now. One really big feature that I've added is actually the ability to get out of vehicles. So you're no longer confined to just the F-16. You can hop out, walk around, jump around, do what you need to. Um, and I've actually got this other car over here, which is based off of my car in real life. So here's that car. Um, you hop in and out of it the same way that you do with the jet. There's just a invisible box that you um, press F on or grab if you're in VR. Um, you can drive around. It's, it's, it's just pretty neat being able to hop out of one vehicle and into another. Because I'm in the car, I'm just going to drive down and show you what the water looks like up close. Okay, so this water over here, it's just FBM, that's Fractal Brownian Motion Noise, that I applied an offset to, um, to each layer, so it does these kind of rolly wave patterns. Um, it's not the best algorithm to do this. There's the uh, Fast Fourier Transform, um, like, sinusoidal waves, which I know look much better, and I actually created this shader for my entry into the 2023 Godot XR Jam, which I actually used the F-16 from this project um, for that game jam as well. I've done a ton of improvement to Flight Assist, so now the Flight Assist actually works well, um, and beyond that, I've added Autopilot. So I've got this little dummy AI autopilot that takes off and flies circles, um, as well as I've got this speed hold, um, altitude hold, and heading hold. So this little NPC plane um, just uses a like a point target, so it'll just fly to any point that I specify, and um, he'll roll into the corners like a like a real human would or would tend to do when flying. It's not perfect, but I'm still improving it as I go. I have yet to make little adjuster knobs for the autopilot, so the only way to set your speed, altitude, or heading is to look in that direction, be going that speed, and press the button. Eventually I do want to add more of these little interactables, whether they're knobs, switches, levers, things like that, but that'll come with time. There's also these buttons here off to the side to mess with the flight assist, 
assist. So you can disable flight assist entirely. You can disable it selectively on pitch, yaw, or roll. And you can also disable the G limiter. So I'm here in VR. Um, everything works the same as it has. There's, there, I mean, there's not any fundamental changes in how things work. Um, you can press all the buttons as you have been able to. They give you a little bit of haptic feedback. So one issue I've had um, so far in the project is that I can't do this multi-level rendering, this multi-distance rendering with VR, um, partly because of how I'm doing it. It just doesn't cooperate with VR very well. Another part of it is because VR doesn't support running multiple VR viewports at the same time. So this main viewport here in the remote scene tree, that's actually the main window that the game runs under. That's the only viewport that Godot will nicely display VR content onto. So the consequence of this is when running in VR, we have to run everything on the main viewport. Um, we can't render that second viewport behind the main viewport. And then lastly, if we want to have a custom like spectator camera to be displayed on the monitor, which is common in a lot of VR games, we actually have to defer that to a separate viewport. It's an easy enough workaround, but it's, it's a shift of a way to think about it. So the big feature that I haven't created an alternative to for the flat screen mode is physics interaction. So I don't have a way to, uh, or I haven't devised a way to pick up objects and move objects around in flat screen mode, I'll probably just go with kind of like Gmod or Skyrim physics interaction. Things are still quite buggy. Um, this is a very new feature, but my, my future plans, I want to add guns. I want to add more things to physically interact with um, and play with to make, you know, the fun parts of VR. You don't get to shoot guns every day in real life, at least most of us. Um, and I want to unify all the controls so I want the joystick and throttle to both be physical controls currently they're a custom their custom logic that is already hard to maintain but beyond that it's it's split my interaction under two types which is something else to account for and check for errors so I'd like to consolidate it on uh, into one mode of interaction so with that, that's really all that there is in this update. Um, it is, by the time I get this uploaded and you guys watch it, it's probably going to be Christmas Eve or Christmas. So hope you have a Merry Christmas. Um, enjoy the rest of your holidays. Other than that, it would mean a lot to me if you subscribed, liked the video, left a comment. Um, if you stayed here all the way to the end of the video, I'm going to assume that you're interested in this kind of thing. So that would be right up your alley. Um, other than that, if you'd like, I will list my GitHub repos for a couple of my plugins that I use in this project. I hope that you'll find them useful. I, I tried to make them as good of plugins as I could so that other people could make use out of them. So it'd, it'd mean a lot to me if you used them. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video.